This is your WXEO Daily News Roundup for Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 FM and 12.30 AM in Wausau. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. We could get a better idea today if Wisconsin Assembly Speaker Robin Voss will face a recall election, and if so, where? The Wisconsin Elections Commission is considering the matter after agency staff this week determined recall petitioners collected enough valid signatures in Voss's old district that the state Supreme Court says is unconstitutional. Wisconsin Supreme Court justices say they were shocked to find out a draft order indicating the state's highest court plans to hear a lawsuit on abortion rights was leaked to reporters at Wisconsin Watch. Chief Justice Annette Ziegler says the court has called law enforcement for an investigation. Wisconsin's votes in the race for president is a dead heat among registered voters. It's 50-50 this time. It was 49-51, Trump leading by two last time. So it's just tightened, but it's still dead tight. Marquette Law School poll director Charles Franklin says President Biden has a two-point lead among likely Wisconsin voters. In the race for U.S. Senate, Tammy Baldwin leads Eric Hovde 52-47. to The candidates for president hold their first debate tonight. Wisconsin Democratic Party Chair Ben Wickler is looking for a steady performance from President Biden. Maybe not the most flashy president, but gets the job done. In every metric you look at, you can see how President Biden has followed through on his promises, how he's over-delivered, and Trump talked big and then did nothing. Wisconsin Republican Party Chair Brian Schimming says President Biden will have to do more than just not stumble. Democrats are running around like, wow, isn't he great if he just manages to make it through an hour and a half? Well, boy, if that's your standard, uh, if that's where you sent the benchmark, uh, you got you got trouble. Coverage on many of these civic media stations starts at 730. Flags across Wisconsin are flying at half-staff to honor the life of Lincoln Hills youth prison teacher Corey Prue, who was killed this week. The 49-year-old was attacked by an inmate Monday night and died the next day. The 16-year-old suspect is being charged as an adult. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now here's what you need to know closer to home. For WXCO News, I'm Brittany Merlot. A 49-year-old Lincoln Hills youth counselor has died after an assault from a teen. 49-year-old Corey Prue worked there since last spring after briefly leaving the school two years prior. The 16-year-old inmate assaulted Prue, who hit his head on the concrete. He was immediately taken to Aspirus Hospital, but was declared brain dead Tuesday afternoon. Prue's fiancé and daughter said that they would like everyone to know that Corey was an amazing partner, father, son, and human being. And at this time, the family does not wish to comment further and asks for privacy as they grieve. Meanwhile, the 16-year-old who assaulted him moves ahead as an adult facing homicide charges. Javarias Hurd is facing second-degree reckless homicide and felony murder by battery. He appeared in Lincoln County Court yesterday afternoon. He's being held in the Lincoln County Jail on a $100,000 cash bond. Building connections is a key component to helping kids avoid substance abuse. Co-founder of The Turning Page, a drug use prevention program, Jacob Jansen, You know, when I was growing up, I got picked on, I got bullied a lot. I I felt like I was excluded from that group of friends, and it drove me to look towards substances. Their truth program, teaching resilience, using trust and honesty to provide students with coping skills to stop substance abuse. And don't fall for a publisher's clearinghouse scam. The BBB is warning that scammers are again using the sweepstakes to trick people into paying for their prizes that they haven't even actually won. Callers are impersonating Publishers Clearinghouse employees. They send a photo of your new car and all of the money that you won, but say that you must pay a fee for the IRS requirement or a broker's fee. The real Publishers Clearinghouse will never ask for a payment. So if you receive a call like this, hang up. The body of the person who went missing on the Eau Claire River over the weekend has been found. The Eau Claire County Sheriff's Office says that Robert Hansen was fishing on the river near Black Bear Road on Highway 27 when he disappeared under the high and fast river waters. Hansen was found dead by a kayaker in the town of Lincoln on Tuesday. And tenants in a Chippewa Falls apartment building were evacuated this week as their building sinks into the ground. 30 units were evacuated because one corner of the apartment building is setting into the ground near a creek. Engineer crews are evaluating the building and the owners do not know yet when the tenants will be allowed back into their homes. 
And the Wisconsin River is still under a flood warning at Wausau. Areas near D.C. Everest Park and Oak Creek Park are seeing waters rise. With more rain on the way tomorrow, keep an eye on it if you live nearby. We are looking at around a half an inch to another inch and a half. A new solar canopy is being installed at Grolsky Park in Stevens Point. It's the first of a kind, and the solar canopy will provide shade, a free charging station, and generate more energy than the park will consume. The surplus energy will then be sold back to the utility company, reinforcing the city's long-standing commitment to sustainability. The Judy Grosky family donated 10 acres of land to the city in November of 2020. The official opening is anticipated in late August. And tickets are on sale for the Green Bay Packers' 23rd annual Family Night taking place on August 3rd. This will be a full practice with a game-like atmosphere, giveaways, and a fireworks show. Doors open at 5.30 and the team will take the field for warm-ups at 7. This practice game begins at 7.30. Tickets are $10 per person and fans must purchase a mobile parking pass to park in the Lambeau lots. And that's what you need to know. I'm Brittany Merlot for WXCO. In the first round, the Bucks select A.J. Johnson. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with Sports. The Bucks' first round draft pick is out of California and played in the Australian Pro League. Bucks GM John Horst on AJ Johnson. He is a six five guard with about a six eight wingspan, six eight plus wingspan. So you know he'll play at all of it six five, maybe even six six. He's about 170 pounds. He's gonna he's gonna add weight, um, but he's a really hard worker, really driven kid. So what does the 19 year old bring to Milwaukee? No, I'll definitely say um, athleticism, my playmaking ability, like. Just my electricness. I feel like I can um, do stuff out there that you might not see a lot. And I feel like I could just um, help any organization uh, win. Baseball, the Brewers sweep the Rangers with a 6-5 to five win in 10 innings. But third baseman Joey Ortiz left the game after colliding with a roll of tarp going after a fly ball. Yeah, he's, still, he's dealing with this neck thing, and he's had it since L.A. He said it was okay, he just doesn't feel great swinging. That's Brewers manager Pat Murphy with Sports. I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Aside from Game 7s being some of the most exciting events in sports, you can always count on one of them to boost ratings. Deadline.com reports that Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals brought historic numbers as the Florida Panthers won their first NHL title, knocking off the Edmonton Oilers 2-1 in a thriller. 16.3 million viewers tuned in in North America alone for the most watched NHL game in 20 years. Almost makes me wish I liked hockey. Fans of Eddie Murphy, or... Donkeys will have a new Shrek film to see. Murphy recently revealed that the fan favorite Donkey will have his own spin-off, which will be the fifth film in the crazy successful Shrek franchise. While promoting a new installment of his other highly successful franchise, Beverly Hills Cop, Murphy told Collider that he's already finished recording his voice work for Act 1 and that Shrek 5 should be released sometime in 2025. Beverly Hills Cop Axel Foley F drops July 3rd on Netflix. Martin Short is filling in for Jimmy Kimmel this week. On his first night, he got a surprise visit from guess who? Steve Martin. Martin took the stage near the end of Short's monologue and told the crowd he was honored that Jimmy asked him to be the guest host first, but he said no and told Kimmel not to worry that he would find someone to fill in for scale. That's a paraphrase. Short replied, I appreciate you being here, Steve. There are very few people in this world I truly admire, and you are very close to being one of them. How do you not love those guys? Jeremy Renner might be working again, but he says he's not ready to play challenging roles after his snowplow accident in January of last year. Renner told the guys on the Smartless podcast that he doesn't have the energy to play make-believe. Despite returning to acting for season three of The Mayor of Kingstown, which he says is easier because it's familiar, the actor is still recovering from severe chest trauma after a snowplow ran him over. Charges could be filed soon against multiple individuals in relation to Matthew Perry's death last fall. A joint investigation by the LAPD, DEA, and the U.S. Postal Inspection Service could result in criminal charges after Perry's death from the acute effects of ketamine. Perry was found unresponsive in a hot tub at his home last October 23rd. Authorities initially did not think foul play until an autopsy determined there were other contributing factors. Here's a Pete pick specifically for the motorcycle crowd. The Bike Riders is a well-done film that members of the motorcycle community will enjoy more than others. It's well-acted and written and looks good, if not a bit slow at times. The film stars Thomas Hardy, who does his best Marlon Brando, Austin Butler, and Jody Comer, who gives an excellent performance. The film got positive reviews to the tune of 81% on Rotten Tomatoes, Bike lovers and biker gang members will love the bike riders. For more showbiz fun, tune into Nightlight with me, Peach Waba, weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. Partly cloudy today. We'll get to 74 for a high this afternoon. The wind out of the southwest at 5 to 15. Tonight, 57. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy with scattered thunderstorms, especially in the afternoon. Our high tomorrow near 70.
I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Currently, it is 60. That's your WXCO Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at bullfallsradio.com.